I guess we'll get started. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Soen, uh, and I'm talking about evolving exploits through genetic algorithms. So uh, before I jump into genetic algorithms though, uh, I wanna just give you a little back over of who I am. Uh, DEF CON for many years. Uh, uh, I do programming, I, I love viruses, worms, and uh, I've been trained as a computer scientist and I do penetration testing in the daylight hours. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm still a noob. But uh, this talk was focused uh, mainly off of uh, kind of uh, my computer science interests and uh, my job and my inner laziness wanting to come out. And I was looking at my job and I go, uh, what I do on a day to day basis is I exploit web applications. And uh, there's a number of problems associated with, you know, performing this task. And, uh, the, uh, the major ones are it is driven by the customer, so you have to provide them what they want. Uh, there's a small scope. You're only allowed to hit a tiny portion of the site, so you have to have a uh, scalpel light uh, efficiency. You can't hit the whole web server with a hammer. Uh, you only have a limited amount of time, usually very short, as in a, a day, two days, three days. Uh, and it's all report driven because it's based off of giving a report to the customer. And so, uh, these problems were what has been driving me to look into this area and, uh, and there's a number of ways that I uh, approached trying to solve these problems and my methodology was usually run as many scanning tools as possible against a web application and then uh, manually poke at the areas that, you know, come up as suspicious. And from there, if it does turn out to be exploitable, I write an exploit for it. But uh, there's, there's a couple problems inherent with that approach because uh, the code coverage uh, at w is inherently small because I'm trying to limit the amount of code that I view on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so uh, I, I want to have myself view less code and make sure that it, the code that I'm viewing is actually uh, potentially vulnerable instead of just what have you. And uh, also the uh, inspection of suspicious areas that are discovered by, say, web scanners or manually testing uh, is also time costly as well. Uh, and then additionally, the development of a working exploit for a site takes time as well because there might be additional uh, blocking uh, mechanisms in place like a, a WAF, a, a web application firewall, which y you can see you have SQL injection, but all of a sudden you don't really have SQL injection because there's, there's an additional layer you have to break through. And uh, there's a number of really good tools out there for exploit discovery and development. And uh, I, 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 I use Acunetics, Burp, Zap, and SQL Map very frequently, uh, and they're all fantastic tools. Uh, but uh, I, I realized running, uh, you know, some of the other tools like Nessus, Nmap, uh, other scanning tools, uh, that there, there's this, this problem there's this very similarity, there's this very big similarity with uh, an existing industry. And it's a, it's a fundamental problem with web application scanners as we know it today. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> stand over there. <laughs> what up, bitches? <laughs> it's funny. He thought you were clapping for him. <laughs> He's like, well, I, you know, said SQL map, what? <laughs> okay. All right, you know why we're here? Yeah. Wow, this is the first time I had, when there you off. go. That's what I'm talking about. At the very back in the gray. No, in the hoodie, man. Bring your Skittles up here. <laughs> What's it called? What do we call this? Oh, what is this called? Shut the moon. Thank you. Oh my God, that was awesome. The price is right, you are running. here, all right. Thank you, sir. Wait, what's your name? Connor. Connor. Connor represents all of you who are first timers. And DEF CON. So, foundational problems with current techniques. <laughs> Sorry, that's all I knew. I think he was talking about <laughs> scanning. 
Oh, scanning. Scanning and software and stuff. Oh my God, look, he's got a countdown timer. Yep. Oh shit, you only have five minutes to go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Four minutes? Wow, that sucks. Oh, God. <laughs> All good. Well, thank you for the alcohol. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> So uh, back on track, uh, the foundational problems that we have with web application scanners is that uh, the current main technologies are built around a signature-based system. They, they have an understanding of what a potential exploit could look like. They throw it at the web server, and then if they retrieve a favorable or unfavorable result, they mark it as a finding. And so, uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> okay, so, so uh, I thought, you know, hey, why not, why not take genetic algorithms and apply them to web applications? Why not take, you know, your average uh, basic SQL injection and go from something that uh, a web uh, application firewall can easily protect against and a uh, programmer can easily defend against to something that is uh, more, more hard to, uh, to stop. And so uh, this whole process of evolution is, is something that was really fascinating to me. And so, uh, so for this talk, we're going to use genetic algorithms to make exploits for SQL injection, command injection, and uh, our attack surfaces HTTP and HTTPS. So uh, it's web-based parameters. And uh, we're not going to cover anything else. There's this, this could be applied to a number of different things, uh, another you know, JSON, AJAX, what have you. But uh, just for the scope of this talk, we're talking about SQLi and uh, command injection. So uh, the tool I wrote for this talk is called Forced Evolution. Uh, and it takes this concept of uh, I, I'm going to use genetics to write exploits for me so I don't have to do it myself. It's, it's the inner lazy programmer. <laughs> so uh, what is a genetic algorithm? Well, a genetic algorithm is essentially uh, you create a large number of things. And in this case, they'll be exploit strings. And uh, you look for a certain solution that these things will provide. And in this case, it'll be an exploit. Uh, and then you score all the strings' performance using some sort of vague, ambiguous fitness function. And this fitness function, in our case, uh, well, I'll, we'll get into that later, but there, there is a way of determining, okay, using numbers, this is a better injection string than the previous one. And uh, so our, our algorithm here is we have this loop. While we haven't found the solution, we score, we kill off all the low performing strings, uh, we breed the strong performing strings, the ones that are more efficient or they bypass or they exploit better, and then uh, we also mutate the strings randomly. And then once we have a, found a correct exploit, we display it and show it. And so uh, the tool, Forced Evolution, does exactly this. We create a large number of pseudo-random strings. Uh, they, we are pulling upon the history of all previous, uh, well, all that I could find, uh, SQL injections and command injections. Uh, and using them to influence the population of creatures that we breed. So we're not uh, losing evolutionary progress. We're progressing forward. Uh, so we're, 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 we create a large amount of strengths, and then we breed in what we know has worked in the past. But we use that just to influence the population. We don't actually say, OK, we have a set of signatures, because then we're back to the original problem. Uh, and then uh, it, it, we, we go through the exact same process as a generic genetic algorithm. Uh, we send the string as a parameter value, either post or get, what have you, and then use the uh, response from the server to determine the score. And this could be many things. So there, we, we have a, a good deal of granularity on how we can score a string. And then, you know, just like the rest, we cull, we breed, we mutate, and then it, when we find in a string that exploits, successfully exploits an app, we display it. So, there's a number of things that we, we also need to talk about. Like, what is this fitness function? Like, how do we define, is this string better than another string? And uh, there's, there's a couple of things that we can look at and say, does it cause weird behavior? Uh, is this string reflected? There might be a potential for XSS in this. Uh, does this string cause an error? 
And if so, it, uh, is our SQL injection or command injection displayed inside of that error? That, that gives us additional information as well. And uh, also, does the exploit string cause uh, goal data or sensitive data to be displayed so that we can see, oh, potentially this is you know, a good exploit. So once we've, once we found out what a, a creature score is, then we breed the top scores and then we kill the, uh, the underperforming scores. And uh, the majority of, well, I can't really say majority, but uh, a good chunk of genetic algorithms use this genome crossover. And this works really well in our domain because we have these variable length SQL injection strings that we need to breed against each other. And so the, this breeding process consists of cutting each string in half and then mixing the halves and then mutating them. And uh, the current implementation that I have in the tool is uh, two parents create uh, four children and also survive themselves. So they pass on their genes and they also live to see another day until someone is better than them. Uh, now for the next step, like what, what do we mean by mutating strings? Or mutating our, our exploits? So, <coughs> Yeah, that, that whiskey, oof. Uh, the mutation rate uh, I found to be, uh, usually it's best to have it variable. Um, and there's, there's a number of operations that we can use, but it all boils down to three essential operations. We have mutation, changing a single byte in a string, we have adding information, and we also have removing information as well. So it's, it's somewhat like uh, natural evolution. And so, uh, say, say the example of the, uh, the pre-mutated string A, B, C, D, E, or A, B, C, D, uh, the mutations that have been applied to it are the X has been prepended to the string, the B has been deleted, and the D has been mutated to an F. So hopefully that'll give you some idea of what we're saying. We're not doing anything crazy. We're just picking a random part of the string, and we're changing it a little way. So uh, that's how we mutate the strings. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind as we go throughout because we have this algorithmic process of breeding, killing, breeding, killing. So our, our population is going to vary uh, and the mutation rate versus search speed is very important because uh, if we mutate too quickly, if we say every single part of the, every single attack string that we have is going to change, it's essentially throwing random data at the web server and it's really not efficient. It's not worth, it's not worth doing. It's, it's taking a bunch of dice, throwing it in the air and hoping you get all sixes. So uh, it has to be uh, tuned down to a point where it, it is efficient search. Uh, and there's also the, uh, the string cull rate versus the repopulation speed. If you cull more than you breed, uh, your, the amount of strings in your population will decrease and vice versa. If you uh, repopulate too quickly, they'll be like rabbits and you'll have denial of service around the machine. So uh, with, these, with these things in mind, I went ahead and I compiled a, a couple statistics on uh, the, uh, the leading edge tools. And uh, I did Acunetics, Burp, Zap, uh, the OWASP, Zap, and SQL Map, as well as Forced Evolution. And this is, this is just the raw data, but I'll go through some charts to show you how it compares to them. Uh, the number of requests sent to server uh, is, is a very significant amount. Uh, forced evolution sends on average maybe 10 to 30,000 requests to a server. So this is not exactly a, a stealth attack tool, but uh, we'll get into some of the, the pros later. Uh, and the time to exploit is usually dependent on network latency, and so these, these will fluctuate a little bit. But uh, forced evolution does perform well compared to some tools, but not very well at all to others. And uh, the same for SQL injection. I also did the same statistics for SQL injection. And uh, the, the total number of requests per server decreases dramatically because SQL injection has a finer way of expressing uh, uh, the score associated with the fitness function. The, there's, there's a better way and it's easier to score one string higher than another because you have more information to do so. And so it's naturally more efficient because it, it, it depends on that fitness function, that scoring mechanism to determine 
who lives or what string lives and what string dies. And so it reaches a solution faster. And the time to exploit as well uh, decreases proportionally. So uh, hmm. with that, let's go ahead and try a demo. May, may the demo gods be gracious. Because this, this does uh, depend on uh, Python import random. So let's, let's hope everything works. There we go, okay. Ah, oh, this is terrible, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have a generic web application here with a login form. Uh, and uh, it is vulnerable to SQL injection as you can I'll type in just some random characters and it doesn't, it doesn't bring back correct input and uh, there's, there's also other problems with it as well. So we know that a vulnerability there exists and we can discover this vulnerability or this suspicious area like we talked about previously through other scanning tools. And uh, now all we have to do is point uh, forced evolution at it and we'll go ahead and exploit it for us. Let me see. My VMs all of a sudden change size, sorry. There we go, okay. So, and uh, forced evolution will be up on GitHub in about 15 minutes after the talk. So, the command line options, I wish I had my glasses, are uh, we have a target, and for this we'll just do localhost. And we have an address of the vulnerable web page. So in that case, that'll be uh, sqli index.php. And then we also have the vulnerable variable, which uh, I believe is password, although I believe both would work. And then the method. The method previously was displayed as post, or I'm sorry, get, but uh, the tool has, has both options. And then the other variables we'll just include for completeness. We'll just include the, uh, the username. Typo? Typo? I would be dangerous if I had my glasses. Okay. Username equals, let's just say DEF CON. And then we also have uh, what, what will constitute a valid exploit. So in this case, we want to get to the administrative area of the site, and so we'll put in uh, our goal text will be administrative We'll just put admin because the tool will search any request or, or any response that it receives back, parse it, and then uh, determine if it has that string in it. So, and on the right hand side, I have a tail of uh, the current requests coming into the web server. So, as, as we start running the tool, that, that will jump up. Wish me luck, here we go. All right, right now, it has created a large number of strings. Uh, well, actually not that large, it's only about a thousand. But uh, it's running them against the web server currently and it's scoring them based upon what the, the, uh, the response it receives back. And it's taking the top performers and then it's breeding them. So right now we're at generation two. <laughs> Nothing crash. Okay. Five. And because this is based upon uh, random, random strings, uh, sometimes the solution is found extremely quickly, and sometimes it's it takes a while. But uh, because of the influence of the the previous database, uh, this, this will become much, much faster. Come on, come on. There we go, there we go. All right. 
drag this back over to my side. So the pros and cons of using genetic algorithms, uh, the cons, they, they, there's, there's a couple major ones. Uh, this is not a very stealthy attack tool. Uh, as you can see, this generates a large amount of requests to the web server, and that's inherent in genetic algorithms as, as a whole. Uh, and there's a small potential to inadvertently destroy the database and operating system. So I wouldn't run this against, <laughs> I wouldn't run this against uh, yeah, a production environment. <laughs> Job security? I don't know. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, it is a slower process to uh, develop and test exploits. Uh, at least from the front end, because I'm sure anyone in the audience, when they see that SQL injection, they, they brrr, write it out. Uh, but, and see the program took, you know, 20, 30 seconds to do it. And it, genetic algorithms will always be suboptimal to source code analysis, because there's, there's just more code coverage you can do. Uh, but the pros, the pros for genetic algorithms and using these to create exploits are, are, are fantastic. They're, they're really cheap in CPU, RAM, and hard drive, and human time. Uh, you can run that on a Raspberry Pi. Your only limiting feature or factor is the network speed, like how far away are you from the web server. Uh, and as far as my time goes, I can just turn it on and it runs. I, I don't look at it again, it's good. Uh, and I feel it has more complete code coverage than other black box approaches because not only does it have the signatures that the other black box approaches have, it also isn't bound by a box of thinking, this is, or someone saying, this is what we know a good SQL injection to be. It doesn't have that definition. It, it's, it's limitless in its approach to the, uh, the solution. And so that, that, that takes us to the, yeah, right, right now this tool will break web applications in the future. Uh, it might not do it efficiently, but as the, the database of uh, SQL exploits grows, it will do it more efficiently. And uh, the, the, another huge pro for this is automatic exploit development. Uh, the, I don't have to invest my time into sitting down and figuring, oh, okay, I got SQLi. Oh, okay, there's a WAF. Oh, okay, there's something else. Oh, okay, there's filtering rules. Uh, th this doesn't need to know about those. It just cares about that question and response. And so uh, it's, it's really fantastic in that <laughs> regard. And, as, and the last biggest pro for this is emergent exploit discovery. Because since this isn't bound by what we know as, okay, this is a valid exploit, this will create new things, new ways of approaching problems that we haven't seen yet. And for that reason, I think it's absolutely fantastic and I think we should pursue this. So in conclusion, you can download the tool, give, give me about 15 minutes, and uh, there's my contact info. So.